Boys, boys, boys and girls. Look, I don't know what's happening all of a sudden. But now with the whole YouTube thing taking off a bit, I get a lot of questions, a lot of emails and a lot of questions on Facebook um, about building these things and you know, painting them and weathering them. So there's a lot of those questions. Oh, how do you paint them? Where do you get the colors? Uh, how do you do the weathering? What, 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 what? Much of a muchness. But every now and then there's a question that really gets to me and that I find interesting. And I thought, hmm, let's make a video about this. Guy uh, Clive, somebody asked me this morning, he sent me a mail and he asked me, he said to me, listen, do you ever take into consideration weight when you build your models? I said, yeah, yeah. I try and get it as close as possible to the real weight. And he says, yeah, but that's impossible. I said to him, what do you mean? He says, you know, uh, this thing weighs 90 tons, and you divide that by 24, and you get something like 3.2 tons or something, I can't even remember. But I said to him, no, 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 no. You don't understand. This is how it works. Weight is volumetric. So weight counts over length, width, and height of the whole thing. So you got to work out your weight in that sort of dimension, if that's the right word. So he says, yeah, but how the hell do you do that? I said, well, it's fairly easy. You take your scale... Like I said to you, you 1 in 24 scale. And you take it to the power of 3. That's for the length, width, height. Okay? So you do the 24 times 3. If you do, obviously, 119.6 times 3, that'll give you a number. Uh, uh, gauge 1, 1 in 32. Uh, that'll be 32 times 3. Uh, 32, 32 to the power of 3. That'll give you a number. Um... While I'm on this now, if you go to HO Scale, do not switch off the phone now. Uh, go watch a movie. Because at HO, it's so small, and the smallest scales, it's so small that if you do it like this, a class 34 should weigh about 200 grams. And that's way too light. It won't be able to pull anything. You, know, you want your HO scale stuff to be between 350 and 400, you know, almost double what this will give you. Okay, so it, this is for large scale stuff. Anyway, all right. So we model in 1 and 24. So 24 to, to, to the power of 3 gives you 13,824. Now, you get the weight of your train in real life. This is a class 35 with full tanks. It weighs 90 tons. And then you... Uh, Take the 90 tons and divide it by 13,824, and that will give you 6.51 kgs. That's what it's supposed to weigh. Now, on this locomotive, it's fairly easy because it uses the same parts as the bigger class 34, for instance, does. So just the bolt stuff that goes in here. The two motor blocks with the side frames, 900 grams each, 1.8 kgs. The chassis, um, with all the add-ons and my metal frame and all that stuff on it, is 2.4. Okay, because I got the frame at the bottom. There's also the same, I use 10 millimeter square bar, which I weld together in a ladder frame and I put it underneath. And I also do it inside the diesel tank. A, for stiffness, B, to make it heavier. And uh, that's a very nice place to put it in the middle, but more about that later. Okay, so then you have the 1.8, you have the 2.6. The body with the interior and everything on it is about 0.9. Now, that gives you 4.78 kgs. All right? I would like to get them all. Atis one was 5.92, I think. This one will be slightly heavier. This one will nudge 6 kgs um, because I'm going to do something else inside. But I'll show you when I've done it. Um, I've never done one to 6.5 kgs. It, it was just no place to do it. Well, I never really tried that hard. They pulled well enough. 
However, for the sake of being in scale and doing everything right, like I want to, um, I did ballast one of the 34s. Because now remember, a 34 is 113 tons. If you run through that 1384, you get to 8.2 kgs. The heaviest 34 I've ever built was the red one at 6.3 kgs. So you two kgs away, I mean, I've got no idea um, how you will get that extra two kgs in there. Um, that's a bit of a hard one. Um, but the 6.3 kg one, I did ballast. I ballasted one of the, the blue ones before as well. And I had a little pull scale that I put on the track, nailed it down and then hook it to the coupler so I could get the drawbar pull. Now, this is the weirdest thing. This is something you need to explain to me because I don't fully understand it. The class 35 with this shorter wheelbase actually out pulls on the drawbar a class 34. It's the weirdest thing and it weighs 700 grams less than a 34. I do not understand it. Now, what I found before was with a shorter wheelbase, that might have something to do with it. I did, however, turn it around. Now, a class 35 is not symmetrical, meaning that the overhang at the back here is shorter than the overhang at the front. So the length from your pivot that sits here to the coupler where it actually hooks is shorter here than there. So I turned this thing around and it lost six, uh, 280 grams um, on the doorbar just because... There was a longer space there. I don't understand. I don't know how it works. I don't know why it does that. These things pull. They pull really, really well. Okay, but that's now besides the point. We're wandering off. So, I sent this dude a mail back and I said to him, listen, man, yeah, I, I try and get them. And I showed him this whole formula and how you get to the weight and what 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 and then he says, uh, thing that he says okay, yeah, but the, where do you put the weight? Now, this is very important. This also brings me to a place where I lost so much speed today. This thing was supposed to be done and wedded. But me being me, I was putting the cab on, I've done the weights and everything. And then I just went, Poof. and this was the net result. The nose fell on the floor, and I can feel the anger just looking at this coming up in me again. But I'm not going to go there. Anyway, all right, so I use wheel weights. Uh, normally when it's in here, uh, the pieces of plastic are lying here. Some, you know, it's pieces of plastic, ABS that I actually put over it because this looks very unprofessional. But I put the weights in and then I cover it up with a with a, a little plastic thing and I paint it. And I normally, this is very important, what I'm going to tell you now. The nose, um, okay, this is the side. You see how I did it? A lot of weight at the top because I need the bottom open on the sides and then on the front a single one. And this is very important. Dudes, please listen to me. When you do the weights, your nose, like here's the new nose now, sits that high. That is the highest you can put the weight. You never put weight above that line. Because I don't know why it happens, but I've done one before where I put the weights in the roof. I, was like, I thought it was a brilliant idea because it leaves my inside open for my wiring and my decoders. So I put everything at the top. A, that was a very, very bad pulling loco. It, it, for some other, and it was top heavy. I, mean, I remember that, I don't know, it just didn't pull with any of the others. And I, I just dropped that immediately. It was an ill-running loco, that. I hated the thing. And then, you know, as soon as I dropped the weight more towards chassis level, ah, everything was fine. All right, so how do you do it? Where do you put the weight? The best results I've had was 250 
grams in the nose. And the pivot, like I said, the pivot here, so that's right at the end of the chassis. Then this side, I built a box here where I put the decoder on and I put 250 gram in there, weight as well, so that this is balanced. That on the other side, the outside of the pivots, you have 250, 250, no problem. Then you take the 250 together, 500 gram, you put that in the middle. And there's your kg ballast and happiness. Um, that gave me the best results. That um, Jan de Goos that built Old Brown, which was the champion puller out of all the Cape Cage one stuff for two years. He didn't worry about this too much. He put a huge weight in the middle here. Right slap bang between the pivots. And Old Brown pulled. I mean, that loco wasn't scared. But that was... He had zero weight anywhere else except the motor blocks and all the weight there. And that worked as well. Um, but I saw with the red one, you know, if you put a little bit of weight here and a little bit of weight there, the, these bogies are the USA Trains one. They got the floppy front. And if you put the weight here, they tend to bite better on that front floppy one for some other reason. Because I think the chassis leans on over the pivot. The pivot's very far back. So it gives it a little bit of weight there. And, you know, it's just better. They just, on the scale, they just pull better. So that's basically that. This is the rule, in other words. Keep the weight under the line of the nose, everything there. Um, ends, whatever you put on the ends, combined, put in the middle, and you've got a nicely balanced, nicely weighted loco. And you would see, if you do the drawbar pull, that once a loco is balanced here, it tracks better, it runs better, it just works better. You never have crap with that loco, it's just the way it works. It'll keep going and going and going, and whatever you put behind it, it will pull. Now, sometimes we do consist where we have four motor blocks in two locos pulling. And I've seen, and normally, if we want to model true South African, normally they ran arse to arse, so the other one would be running backwards. Now, I've seen it, if you have a lot of weight here, nothing here, and that one runs, you've got very little weight on this motor block, very little weight on that one, and it just stuffs up the whole consist. You've got to keep it balanced. Then they just pull better. All right, so that's basically that. This, I bought a new nose and I just painted it. That's still, you can see, I just painted it. It's still tacky and wet, you know. And you're going to sit here and do something and your arm touches there and there's a mark. So best I think I go home now and go rest and tackle this thing again tomorrow. Because um, this really broke my speed. But the interior is in. I've got, uh, you know, every, I did the lights a different way this time. You know, I don't know what, like the teepees I had over at each one. So I did it like this. Um, so that you can still take the roof off and look at the interior. That's all wara 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 in. Uh, but um, yeah, I'll finish this over the long weekend. Monday, Monday, I must cut this box. This must be out of here. Dudes, lekker jelle. Have a hell of a happy Easter weekend. Drive carefully, please, because um, there's a bunch of maniacs out on the road. And have a hell of a nice time with the family. And then we will speak again on Tuesday. Okay, dudes. Thanks a lot. Keep well. Goed, jylle. Uh, tot ziens.